another Gale Force Twins episode. We are so excited to be here with Lieutenant Nelson. We are at the Coast Guard Station in Cape May, New Jersey. We have some really awesome things planned for you guys on this episode. So Lieutenant Nelson, can you give us a small snippet, tell our viewers a small snippet of what you have planned for us? Absolutely. So we're going to get underway today on uh, our couple of our response boats and we're going to take you out into the ocean. I'll uh, probably let you drive if we, uh, I know you guys are merchant <laughs> yeah. mariners, so uh, I, we, I know we can trust you and uh, we're going to have, we're going to do some training missions. Awesome. awesome. We're super excited. This is Lieutenant Nelson. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. So today we're going to take out the uh, the 45 response boat medium. This boat we use for uh, any cases offshore. So if sport fishers in need of assistance, this is the boat we're going to be taking. Uh, can, we can go out to 50 nautical miles. Um, goes up into 10 foot seas, 30 knots of wind. It's a it's a jet dry boat, and uh, you guys are going to get to drive it today. So, oh my uh, gosh! Come awesome. On board. <laughs> Heading out, the engine checks have already happened. Yes. And we are now all supposed to be on the lookout. Everybody has a different role on the boat, and we're gonna be looking for anything. They're gonna make sure the stern is clear. Um, they were saying if there's a kayaker coming by, pay attention, point it out. If you see something, say something. <laughs> so we're about to head out, we're leaving the dock. We were told that on the way out, we have to hold on to something, stay seated. So that is the plan, that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna hold on to I guess there's lots to hold on to. We'll lots of hailing right to hold here. on to. And we're only gonna have two foot seas today, which shouldn't be too bad, especially in a 40, 40 a 45, foot 40 foot, 46 foot vessel. I see I have a camera in the engine room. And what that does is basically tells you what's going on. If there's a fire, how do you handle it? So if there's a fire, and you have a camera in there, the last thing you want to do is go in there. So how do you handle that? So basically with that, uh, if we see smoke in the engine room, uh, right around here on this side of the coxswain seat, we'll pull this little bottle. So basically what that does is it's like a fire extinguisher that goes off in the engine room to put out the fire. And then also it will shut the air vents so that way no more oxygen is getting in to feed the fire. As Derek was just talking to Emily about what happens if there's a fire in the engine room, we also have this engine shutoff switch. Is the engine fuel shutoff switch? Yes. So these are the fuel poles. So this will just cut the uh, fuel off to the engines and will close the valves manually. So that way we also don't have to go into the engine room. And then right here is your bottle on this side mm -hmm. down here. And that's what actually sets off the FM200. Right. And that bottle down there essentially is a fire extinguisher. The FM200 is an aerosol, as you were saying earlier, and that's just gonna eliminate all the oxygen in there. The valves are gonna be shut, again, eliminating oxygen to just completely stop that fire. And with that camera down in there, nobody has to go down there. You can actually just see it and monitor it, and that's a much safer way to handle a fire than actually going into the engine room. Correct. We're about to go through the inlet. We are at our cruising speed of 1950 RPMs, which is around 28 knots. You can guys can see the boat's moving a little bit because that inlet's gonna be a little rougher than the bay and maybe even offshore because those inlets and those rocks are gonna cause some currents to build up and have some rough seas. But like we said earlier, we're only in two foot seas today, so it's really not gonna be that bad. It is time for the fun part. I get a chance to drive a Coast Guard boat for the first time in my life. So I have to bring this armrest down. I'm supposed to push this button. There we go. Okay. And the coxswain is going to be instructing me on everything I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm going to sit here. All right. So to take over, you mash the throttle. So make sure they're both in the center. All right. They look yeah. like they're in the center. Okay. Yeah. Sure okay. <laughs> yeah. There's like a button right, right here on your right side. Yeah. You double click that twice. And then you should be in transit mode. There's two settings, so transit mode and a docking mode. You should it's in transit. Perfect. All right, so if you want to check your propulsion and steering, so all you got to do is just take this. I, I like to keep like yeah. a spider, uh -huh. spider web, we call it, because it makes it easier to kind of right. control the boat. So just move that slightly up. Um, press the button again. Twice? Yep, twice. 
I'm pushing the, right, okay. see the two lights? Yep. Two green lights? Yep, they're both blink, right, blinking press green. engage on both of them. All right, now you have control. All right, so I have full control. You have, full control. You have no control of the vessel. I have no control of the vessel. Everyone's at my mercy. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. Okay. <laughs> All right, what should I do now? Should I make a turn? Oh, uh, you go faster. I can go faster? Yeah. Do I say coming up? Uh, yeah. Let me know when you want to come up. Uh, I'll come up. All coming right, up. So, scream it up. Coming up! Coming up! So, coming up means speeding up. up. We're going faster, yelling it for everyone on board to hear and know what's happening, know it's time to hold on, grab a handrail, take a seat, whatever it is, but with these seas, we don't have too much to worry about, I assume. It's actually pretty fast. Yeah. Whoa. Well, it does. I'm driving a Coast Guard vessel. There we go. We got some C's in here. And then if I want to come down, do I got to yell coming down? Yep. Coming down. Coming down. He's yelling coming down for me to everybody outside. Let's start coming down. So. Stern is clear. Stern is clear. All right. Stern is clear. Getting all the messages. There we go. I, okay. And then to take control, you want to match my throttles. I want to disengage. Oh. Okay. Disengaging. <laughs> Coming up. Okay, so it's like sensitive, but like not super sensitive. Yeah. That's why like, I like to do the spider web. So if you got your hand here, yeah. sometimes you can overshoot it. All right, is this good? Speed? Yeah, it's perfect. This is your first time too? Doing this? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> kind of like professionals. <laughs> to drive, Amanda got to drive, and the next step is... All right, so ne next we're gonna be uh, throwing some heaving lines over to their boat. Okay. So typically our heaving lines are what we use to connect to our tow line, which is back over here. Um, so if a boat is disabled or anything like that and they need to get back home, uh, we'll hook these lines up to the tow line. We'll throw these over there so that way we're not getting too close to them. Like if the sea state is too big or anything like that, you don't wanna get too close. So we'll use these as like, a, like our messenger line to get it over there and then they'll pull that in and attach it onto their boat. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook these up uh, over to the side of the boat and we're gonna take some uh, turns taking some, some long shots on the, the heaving line over to the other boat. And this is basically what you would do if you were going to go tow a boat? Like maybe they lost steering? Like is this what yeah, that so would? If, if their engines cut out or they lost steering or maybe uh, somebody was unable to drive their boat anymore, we would typically uh, come over, we'd hook up these heaving lines to the tow line, send them over to their boat, they would connect the tow line to uh, like one of their cleats on their boat, and then uh, we would just start paying out line and then tow them back into port. Okay. So I'm gonna step over here so I don't get hit in the head. Okay. Oh wait, I don't wanna get hit in the head either. <laughs> no right. pressure. So, you're gonna yell, ready on deck? Okay. Ready on deck? Louder. <laughs> what's that? Now what? Yeah, it's good. Okay. He's gonna ask if you have a shot. Okay. And then you're gonna say, I have a shot. You think I have a shot, right? Yes, yeah, okay. right Okay. Okay. You see where uh, Gabby's standing? Yeah. Back? Yeah. Aim for her. I have a shot. Oh. So we kind of. Almost. How was that for our first time? It's not bad. <laughs> not it's bad. We were get, we were, everyone's being polite. That was the first time. Okay. You almost made it. When have you ever thrown a rope that like, What I will say is, don't try to aim for the boat. You want to try and throw past it, like, the boat. Way past it. Okay. Okay. So that's where like. That's gotta, a good point. Like, don't look. Like, look past where you yeah. want it to go. Yeah. Okay. If you're aiming for what you want. Okay. With the wind on and the waves. Probably ain't gonna make it. Okay, so Amanda, learn from my mistakes. Okay. So I'm going now, unless I get a second try. You guys can get as many tries as you want. Want me to go? You go. And right. then maybe I'll I'm get right a second try. Right Where do All I right. stand? Ready on deck. Ready on deck. Right, yeah. Right, okay. Yay! Oh, oh, so right. Come on, Greg. <laughs> Greg, come on. I ended. Right <laughs> That's hard. I really felt like I How like, many really people tried. don't get it on their first try? A lot. A lot, okay. Yeah, <laughs> We're ready. 
ready for our man overboard mission with Oscar. So Oscar's pretty quiet. Yeah, Oscar's uh, <laughs> he's asleep right now. Um, but yeah, Oscar weighs dry. I'd say about 60 to 80 pounds. Once he gets in the water, all of his little pockets and everything are gonna fill up. So uh, he'll get really heavy, like over 100 pounds. Like once he's in the water, it like really simulates like what an actual person in the water is gonna feel like. Uh, especially like if they're like unconscious or something like that with their with their arms, like they're not gonna like cooperate with you. So you right. really have to like grab and manipulate them to like how do you wanna get them on board. Um, so essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna be driving. Uh, I'll throw Oscar in the water. Uh, we are going to yell man overboard, which will then be the cue for the coxswain to sound the uh, danger signal, which is your five short blasts. Um, and then he'll flip on like the, the law enforcement lights and he'll mark position on our little GPS up there. We'll flip the boat around and we'll go down swell and then we'll do another turn and we'll start coming back towards him. So what that's doing is we're keeping our bow into the waves so that way it's better for us once we come up alongside of him like trying to station keep next to him because it makes it easier for us to pick him up out of the water uh, once we get to that point uh, the coxswain's going to say uh, move to the recess which is going to be that little the stairs over there we'll go down in there and then uh, he's going to start getting us real close we'll grab him and we'll try to bring him on board and okay you and me to lift all of oscar yep. into the boat we're not going to get any help from oscar he's going to be no. a wet Unconscious. Unconscious. Oscar does not cooperate with anyone. <laughs> All right, we're ready, Oscar. He has no rules. <laughs> okay. Oh! Ma man overboard! Hey, he can't hear you. You gotta yell. Man overboard! So typically, uh, we have two types of pickups. We do a direct pickup, which is us using like our hands and stuff like that. And then an indirect would us be like uh, using the stokes litter and like yeah. maybe entering the water to hook him up into the straps or using even lines to throw behind him and creating an X and then pulling him in. Okay. And yeah, he's here. All right. All right, Emily, are you ready to grab Oscar? We I'm ready. Uh oh. Oscar's a little far. He's, got, he's, coming, oh. he's coming. All right, once you get him, bring him towards me. Bring Oscar this way. Underneath his armpit. Are you ready? The One. Wait, no, slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Okay. Ready? <laughs> One, two, two, three. There you go. You got him. You got him. You gotta grab the leg. Yep. Spin around. Which way? I'm trying to get out of the way. There we go. <laughs> grab his leg. Oscar's in the boat. Roger. We have Oscar on the boat, and now we have to check him for first aid. We're gonna check his circulation, see if he's yep. bleeding, airway, make sure he, his airway is not obstructed, and breathing, see if he's breathing. We can check all those things and that'll determine if we need to do CPR, maybe he needs a Band-Aid, some stitches, maybe he needs a tourniquet, I don't know. But well, we're gonna go and figure all that out. Oscar looks nice and healthy, he's just taking a nap. He did a good job for us, thank you for your participation, participation in today's <laughs> lesson. <laughs> We hope you guys enjoyed coming with us to do some Coast Guard training. We had an absolute amazing time. Thank you to the Coast Guard Cape May Station for having us. It was such an incredible experience. If any of you guys are interested in joining the Coast Guard or learning more about it, make sure you head to GoCoastGuard.com. In the meantime, we hope you get out there, have fun, and stay safe.